Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Monday 10th, June 2024 and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. IMF delivers encouraging news about Trinidad and Tobago's national economy. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. Trinidad and Tobago, through its Ministry of Finance, has received encouraging news from the International Monetary Fund, IMF, which gave Trinidad and Tobago a favorable outlook for growth. The Finance Ministry says that the latest report of the International Monetary Fund underlines that Trinidad and Tobago is undergoing a gradual and sustained economic recovery. Jewel Brown of TV6 News reports. With the Parliament's debate of the mid-year review of the government's budget for fiscal 2024 scheduled to begin in the House of Representatives on Friday, the Finance Ministry issued a statement on Thursday stating that Finance Minister Colm Imbert welcomes the International Monetary Fund's annual report on Trinidad and Tobago published on Wednesday. The Finance Ministry said that Minister Imbert indicated that this IMF report recognizes that the government's reform program introduced at the beginning of its period in office has put the economy on the right track. In a media release on Wednesday, June 5th, the IMF noted that for the first time in a decade, Trinidad and Tobago is undergoing a gradual and sustained economic recovery and that real gross domestic product, GDP, is estimated to have further expanded by 2.1% in 2023, reflecting a strong performance of the non-energy sector. While the IMF said economic growth is projected to gain momentum in 2024, supported by the non-energy and energy sectors, and inflation is projected to remain low, the fund also said that the current account surplus will narrow, mainly due to a decline in energy prices and energy exports, and is estimated at 5.7% of GDP in 2024. However, the IMF said that Trinidad and Tobago's international reserve coverage is expected to remain adequate at 7.5 months of prospective total imports. The finance ministry said that according to the fund, the local financial sector appears sound and stable. Finance Minister Imbert was quoted as having said that he was pleased to see that the IMF agrees with the need to sustain structural reform momentum to support growth because that is exactly what the government is delivering, adding that during the 2024 budget, he announced measures that shifted spending from mitigating the immediate crisis of the pandemic to investment for medium and long-term growth. In its report, the IMF said that Trinidad and Tobago's external public buffers in the Heritage and Stabilization Fund are large at about 20% of GDP. The fund also said that the fiscal position is projected to remain adequate, reaching a deficit of 2.7% of GDP in financial year 2024. The IMF said this reflects lower energy revenues, increased capital spending and a higher wage bill due to the long-standing public wage settlement with some unions. The finance ministry said the IMF provides an independent assessment of the local economy. The government will be seeking a $2.3 billion supplementation to its $59.2 billion budget for fiscal 2024 during the media review in Parliament. Jewel Brown, TV6 News. Former Police Commission of Trinidad and Tobago Gary Griffith says that his offer for him and his team to give the proper advice to those in authority where the Twin Island Republic's war on crime is concerned has been rejected by the Prime Minister. TV6 News has more. Mr. Griffith appeared to be referring to quotes attributed to the Prime Minister in today's Express newspaper in response to questions about the offer by Mr. Griffith yesterday. 
asked why was I willing to offer assistance to the government to reduce crime. It wasn't the government. I was willing to offer my assistance to serve citizens in this country because they are seeing the nation drown in blood daily. I have now noted the response by the Prime Minister, and if what is quoted is true, it is indeed very disappointing but not surprising. Attorneys at law representing Minister of Youth Development and National Service Foster Cummings have sent a pre-action protocol letter to the state noting that his constitutional right to privacy were contravened. It follows allegations against the minister contained in a Trinidad and Tobago Police Service special branch secret note in 2019, which found itself in the public domain. TTT's Sunil Lala reports. Attorneys representing Minister Foster Cummings say the leaking of a special branch note to an opposition senator caused serious damage to the reputation of the minister as a professional and as a businessman. At a media conference on Saturday, Senior Counsel Ramesh Lawrence Miraj said despite the ongoing investigation by the police service, Mr. Cummings has yet been called to be interviewed or clear his name. He added that Mr. Cummings was publicly cleared by the then police commissioner Gary Griffith via a radio interview in 2022 when he noted that there was no evidence to accuse anyone and questioned the relevance for the continued investigation. When you finish your investigation and if you find you could charge me for any offence, you could put it back. But until you, until you can get anything, as Commissioner of Police Griffith said, it has no evidence in that. Correct it. Mr. Miraj said his attorneys attempted to get the publication of these uninvestigated allegations corrected, which became a part of the police records, but to no avail. An email was then sent on behalf of the minister to the TTPS legal unit dated the 21st of August, which requested a response from the Commissioner of Police. The legal unit responded and stated that the minister would send a response by the end of that week. That week passed, months passed, a year has passed, and there has been no response from the Commissioner of Police. He said since the claim for judicial review against the police commissioner has already expired, his legal team has advised Minister Cummings that he has an unanswerable claim against the state for breach of the fundamental right to privacy and it must be filed against the Attorney General as representing the state. So when Minister Cummings filed his case against the state of Trinidad and Tobago, it would be a claim against the state, not a personal claim against the Attorney General or any of his cabinet colleagues. The senior counsel said this matter is one that is close to his heart. In 1975, when a judge sent me to prison for doing my duty, and everybody was telling me, apologize, apologize, apologize. I did not, because I wanted to vindicate my character and reputation. And I fully support, and the minister probably doesn't know how much energy he has given me in this case. Because what they have done to him should not have been done to him. And the reason that we are holding this press conference is that a signal must be sent to whether the police service, the prison service, or all state utilities must not do this to people. He said Minister Cummings has stated that he solely wants to ensure his reputation is intact and any claims he receives from the court will be put towards a special fund for needy people in his constituency. Sonolala, TTT News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick in association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. During a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds, rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. A Frexin Bank earmarks US $1.5 billion for investment in the Caribbean. Javon Keys of TVJ's Business Day. Reports. The African Export Import Afrexim Bank says 1.5 billion US dollars has been earmarked for projects in the Caribbean region. The entity, headquartered in, in Egypt, established an office in Barbados last year. 
Acting Chief Operating Officer at the Afri Exim Bank Caribbean office in Barbados, Okechuku Ihejirika, says the financing agency has identified trade and private sector partnerships as key areas for support in the region. The Exim Bank approved a limit size, initial limit size of $4.5 billion uh, for funding trade-related activities for countries within the region. And that means we identified that are key priority areas that we need to invest in, and we're happy to uh, make those investments in those regions. And as, as we speak, we're looking at a pipeline of at least $2.4 billion of deals that have been shown to us in the region. Now, he says the sum is set to double. The $1.5 billion is supposed to double once we have the 15 CARICOM countries join us. Remember, I said we have 11 at the moment. So once we have the full complement of the CARICOM countries, we will now have 15, uh, we have $3 billion available as limit for investment in qualifying deals from the region. Just for the quality of that audio, he was speaking in an interview with our news center. The organization will host its annual meetings and the African Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum in the Bahamas next week. I'm Javon Keyes. Former Jamaica Prime Minister PJ Patterson weighs in on dual citizenship debate now raging on the political front in that country. Romado Lyons of TVJ News fills us in. PJ Patterson is the sixth and longest serving Prime Minister of Jamaica. After 14 years, he stepped down in 2006. What I did before departure is to change the oath being taken by prime ministers. A change he says was necessary because it was uncomfortable to swear allegiance to a foreign monarch, which takes us to the issue of dual citizenship. While staying clear of the current debate over whether the opposition leader should renounce his British citizenship, Mr. Patterson would only say this. No valid reason exists for maintaining the provisions pertaining to a Commonwealth citizen other than a citizen of Jamaica who is resident for at least 12 months to be eligible for parliamentary office. The qualifications must be based, in my view, on Jamaican citizenship. I don't want to cause any confusion. Citizens of the Commonwealth are at the present time legally entitled to sit in the House or the Senate. I am deliberately confining my remarks to the constitutionality of any such position. Political considerations are well above my grade in the pavilion. During his tenure as Prime Minister, he says the issue of dual citizenship also arose. He gave the example of two appointments he had to make. But after it was disclosed they had dual citizenship, this is what he told them. If you want to accept this position because of its sensitivity, you have to renounce. Both without hesitation proceeded to renounce and were duly appointed to their positions. Mr. Patterson is, however, of the view that Section 40 of the Constitution should not be confined to parliamentarians. For example, the chief of staff. Otherwise, you're exposing the person to charges of treason. The permanent secretary and members of the defense board. I raise without this making any proposal, we have to look at questions of persons like the Chief Justice, like the President of the Court of Appeal, like our electoral commissioners. Ramada Lyons, TVJ News. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's our service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. 
Quintillion Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. 